let's first start off with some teams that could surprise us this season. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me back. Uh, I really enjoyed being on your show last week. I love the the interaction that you're getting on on YouTube. I mean, it's you know the comments, that questions, the suggestions. It's really uh, it's really you know overall, it's pretty it's pretty good. Uh, so we'll start with my first surprise team. I'm going to go with the Miami Dolphins. Um, their strength of schedule, if you notice, is tied for 27th. Uh, you know, obviously, you got Tua Tonga Vailoa coming back in year two. Um, you know, they won 10 games last year. Obviously, they were shy of making the playoffs, but you go out in the draft, you draft Jalen Waddell. Uh, that defense is opportunistic. And then you just look at a, a lot of their home games. You know, we've learned throughout the history that home playing at home is it means a lot. And you've got some teams that play well on the road, but having that home field advantage, especially this year with the fans coming back, you know, it makes a tremendous difference in, uh, in a team's uh, preparation. So, you know, I, I did a little homework myself. So you look at, at their homes, their home opponents, you know, you've got obviously your in division uh, opponents, but you got the Falcons, the Ravens, the Panthers, Texans, the Colts, the Giants. These are, these are some good, uh, good games that I think they can easily win at home. And then you look at your road games, obviously they come to our house in the Superdome, but then they got to go on the road to Tampa Bay. They got to go on the road to, to Vegas and then obviously play their, uh, conference opponents in also in division as well. So, and obviously week one, you know, shoot, they, they go up to New England. Um, you know, New England's kind of had a, a down year last year. First time they haven't had Tom Brady, you know, this year, is it going to be Mac Jones? Is it going to be Cam Newton? As you alluded earlier, you know, who's, who's going to get that nod? I, I agree with you. I feel like Mac Jones is going to get that start um, in week one. So if they, if they can start off this year with a win at New England and then go through the rest of their schedule, take care of the guys that they need to take care of. I mean, Miami could be a, a sneaky team at the end of the year, getting into the postseason. And, uh, you know, we talk about Buffalo and the success that they had last year. Don't be surprised if uh, Miami ends up winning the division this year. Wow. And you know, what's actually not a surprise is that you talking about the Miami Dolphins, just because we've said on the show multiple times over and over again, that I love what Brian Flores and the Miami Dolphins or have been doing this whole entire time of just, uh, whether it be moving up then moving back down in the NFL draft, getting the right pieces in building that offense for two took by low by signing Will Fuller and getting Jalen Waddle as well. Uh, so I like the pick. Um, the Miami Dolphins could surprise us. And, I mean, last year they kind of surprised us going 10-6, and six, barely missing the playoffs. Yeah. This year, who knows what could happen. Uh, yeah, you, def you definitely could see it happening for sure. Yeah, and, and it could. And uh, there could be many more surprise teams as well. Who's second on your list? So second on my list, I'm going to go with the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, right now they're currently tied with the Bills for the 23rd, uh, you know, toughest schedule. Uh, again, you know, this offseason, obviously, the big the big free agent, free agent acquisition was Carson Wentz. Um, you know, we'll see how he does now that he is in a new system, a new area, familiarity with his old uh, offensive coordinator, now head coach and Frank Reich. And then, again, you look at their home opponents, you know, again, we talk about the inner the interdivisional opponents, but you got the Raiders, the Rams, the Patriots, Jets, Seahawks, Bucks, all at home. Those are easily winnable games at home, and especially with having fans this year, that's going to make a difference for Indianapolis. And then obviously on the road, you know, at Arizona, at Baltimore, at Buffalo, at Miami, at San Francisco, those are also winnable games. These are, you know, the Arizona, Baltimore, Buffalo might be a little bit of a challenge, but I, but you could see them easily, um, especially with a 17-game schedule, you could easily see them be 10-7 and seven this year. Uh, maybe 11 and six, perhaps. And, and that's going on a stretch because the AFC is south, especially this year. Is, I think it's going to be a little bit down. I think it's Indianapolis's for the taking, uh, especially you don't know what's going to happen in Houston with Deshaun Watson. Obviously, Tennessee is, um, you know, they changed offensive coordinators. Now Arthur Smith is now the head coach in Atlanta. So you're having to see a little bit of, of a change there. And then Jacksonville, whew, how about the drama going on in Jacksonville with, with <laughs> Tebow and Meyer and, and, you know, basically I saw today that there's, you know, the, the organization is 50-50 on whether or not this is a good move for the organization um, bringing Tebow in. So this could very well be, again, just like earlier we touched on Miami possibly winning the East. I could see Indianapolis definitely winning the South this year based upon the way the other um, conference opponents are, are probably going to have an up and down type of year. 
Hey, I like it a lot. You know, Indianapolis doesn't get enough credit as it is just because, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't even think if you're a casual NFL fan that they made the NFL playoffs last year with Phillip Rivers. Yeah. Now yeah. with a younger quarterback in Carson Wentz, we'll see. And they're still going to do the same thing. You know, they're going to, they're going to run the football. They're going to continue. They've got young guys at running back. They've got young guys at receiver. I mean, it's going to take the pressure off Carson tremendously. I think, I think the stage was too big for him in Philadelphia. And now that he gets a fresh start and he actually gets playmakers around him, something that was obviously missing last year in Philly, I think Carson will slowly start to find that 20 to 17 MVP like form he had prior to going down with a, with an ACL tear. Hey, it could happen. Donning a new number, number two, and going back with this offensive coordinator, Frank Reich, the Indianapolis Colts, your second surprise team. You got one more yeah. surprise team. Who's that? So the one, the one more surprise team I got, and they're actually, I'm, I'm already going to crown them AFC North champions this year. How about the Cleveland Browns? Mm. Um, the ninth, they have the ninth toughest schedule. You know, obviously they're going to be loaded on defense this year. Uh, you go out and get Jadavian Clowney. You go out and get, uh, I think it's Troy Hill from the Rams. And then, obviously, you have some youth. You know, Miles Garrett's going to be back. Then you bring Grant Delpit, Greedy Williams, who were hurt last year. Um, you know, you have you have that youth. And then on offense, you know, Baker Mayfield. We we saw a couple days ago whether or not should the Browns pull the trigger on Aaron Rodgers. But they, just, but they came out publicly and said, hey, Baker Mayfield's our guy. And then you add – a healthy OBJ, you got Nick Chubb, you've got, you just got endless weapons. And so I see, again, the Bengals are still trying to find their footing. Obviously, Joe Burrow in his second year. The Ravens are kind of night and day. As you know, you saw Lamar's first year, they took off last year. I feel like they took a step back. So they're night and day. I feel like the Browns right now are in the best position possible. And then how about week one, going to Kansas City? I tell you what, if they can – knock off Kansas City week one, I would not be surprised if you see Kansas City, Cleveland in the AFC Championship next January, and we could potentially be talking about Cleveland being in the Super Bowl. I know that's a long stretch, and I know that's a far reach, and I know Brownie fans everywhere would love to hear that and see it happening, but believe you me, I feel like Cleveland is loaded this year, and I, I feel like they're more determined than ever, especially since they got a small taste of it this past postseason. I would not be surprised to see them back in the playoffs, potentially further uh, than the divisional round. I freaking love it. Like the Cleveland Browns are just so underrated. And yeah. I think this is, if you are a Browns fan, I know, like you said, those Browning fans, it's okay. You can get excited just because mm -hmm. of the offense. Like this is what we envisioned would happen in that one year that Freddie Kitchens was there. And unfortunately mm -hmm. that just didn't work out. But now that Kevin's fancy comes in, the Browns could do a lot of damage offense, defense, you name it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and trust me, I'm kind of a little bit of a homer. You know, I, I would like to see the Bengals win the division this year, obviously, because of my boy Joe. But, man, I love what Cleveland is doing. And I feel like Cleveland fans have been starving for a championship. you got to go all the way back to what Bernie Kosar to feel that type of success. And so just imagine, you know, Cleveland being in the AFC championship game next January and then say they end up winning that and then they're in the Super Bowl. Can you believe – how madly eruptive the city of Cleveland would be to see their Brownies in the Super Bowl. It would be a sight to see, definitely for sure. I'm flying out to Cleveland if that's the case. I'm not a Browns fan, but that would be a cool <laughs> moment uh, to yeah. experience.